This is Money Scott clearly with another trashy vinyl record show. Some oddities tonight. I wonder if you recognize um, the first two records before the kids' record, but anyway. Yeah, so I <laughs> just figured out what to do tonight, so I decided to do a, a normal vinyl show rather than showing my video editing here. Alright, so let's get done with uh, getting this off here. Okay, that was my 
one of my DJ records I've had uh, in the past here. There you go. Okay, so the first one uh, is uh, called Hell of a Band. That's the actual band name. Hell of a Band. Angel. Hmm. 1976. I never heard of this group before. Yeah, but let's get a listen here for you. Ah. Which is side one, side two. Here's a side one. Hey, that's... Okay, here we go. So I'm just getting it. It's uh, clearing my throat a bit, a bit here, so. All right, so hell of a band. Never heard of them before. 1976, just before the disco era really took off. Uh, but let's find out what kind of music is on this record. I have not heard of this group at all. So let's see if we can recognize some music off of this record. What? Well, if not, then it's definitely a trash record. Hell of a band, or hell of a yeah, hell of a band. Oh, I forgot to put the show you the uh, the the cover of this record. Oops. Oh well. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get this uh, show on the road. <laughs> e okay, so now I'll try to remember that next. Next is uh, Von Mitter. Have some nuts. Not too sure. Not too sure what uh, year it actually is from. Can't find a year printed on here. Uh, so this is before uh, copyrights. Uh, where were oh, hang on. Oh, it's recorded in, uh, November 1963. 1963 for this one. Okay, so this is 1963 recording. I don't know when the record came out. So obviously 1963 or old or newer than that but have some nuts all right so 1963 record it does feel like it let's get a dusting and put it on here ah, a little preview of this uh, earlier this evening and seems really odd all right let's get that uh, dusted here or most of the dust anyway there's still the dust that gets, it gets inside the grooves that the brush cannot reach all right let's get that missing ah. there he goes got in the groove Today, the world is full of countless political exiles from Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America, none of whom can resist that immortal call to spirit and courage, those fighting words, we shall return. This is Von Meter somewhere in the Caribbean. I am with the invasion fleet of the Exile Army, which at this moment lies anchored less than a mile from their homeland on this moonless night. It is now zero hour minus ten, and you can feel the tension mounting here aboard the flagship as everyone awaits the order to start engines, which will signal the beginning of the assault. And wait a minute, this could be it. Start the engine! Start the engine! Start the engine! <laughs> Son of a gun, the string broke. <laughs> Find another one, quick. There seems to be some engine trouble, so while we wait for repairs to be made, let me see if I can get Captain Gomez over to the microphone. Captain, Captain Gomez, can I speak to you for a moment? 
Oh, si, sí, si. Sí. Captain Gomez, now that we're just moments away from action, won't you tell us your invasion plan? Si, sí, sure. The first wave to hit the beach will be the shock troops. The shock troops, and what do they do? They jump off the boat, run through the water, hit the shore, and they yell, get out of here, you dirty guys. <laughs> Well, that, that certainly, that certainly will shock them. You bet. Then the second wave come in to mop up. They yell, still here, you dirty guy? Boy, you gonna get it. But before we do that, we have to soften them up with artillery. Battle station, everybody. This is it. Captain Gomez, we're in firing range. All right, open fire. I say, open fire. All right, all right, who got the bullet? <laughs> Not me. I don't got it either. Not me too. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, here it is. I got it. Just let me get it off my keychain. Oh, here it is. Look at it, huh? Oh, what a beautiful bullet. It's a big one. Oh, see, it's a very, very. Oh, must be very expensive. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Sanchez, there's the target. Fire! Gee, I don't know if I can throw it that far. <laughs> Hey, that's a good throw, Sanchez. Ooh, look at it go! Yeah, you got a good arm! Hey. Hey. Good shot, Sanchez! To hit the mountain! <laughs> Captain Gomez, does this mean that you will now unleash the full fury of your attack and hit the beach? Yeah, too bad. Come on, man. Let's hit the beach. Captain, Captain, it's 5 30. Son of a gun. It's 5 30 already? See? Okay, turn it boat around. We got to go back. It's 530. Why, Captain, victory within your grasp and you're turning back? Sure. It's 530. So what? We only rented the boat till sea. <laughs> As a medium for communication, the values of television are debatable, but nothing beats the old TV tube as a medium for solicitation. And now back to our television studios in fabulous Hollywood, where we are moving into the 38th consecutive hour of this great John Lurch Society Telethon. And once again, here's your genial master of ceremonies, Conrad Feeder! <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Right you are, Bruce. Hello out there. For those of you who have just tuned in, our telephone operators are standing by to take your call. So get busy and make your contributions. Our total at this moment is the 87,000 mark, but we're shooting for the grand total of 100,000 within the next few minutes. So pick up your phone right now and contribute. Contribute the name of a communist and put us over the top. <laughs> Hello, this is Earl Warren. General Eisenhower, Walter Cronkite. No. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We already have them, but keep trying. Yes, sir. Come on now. We don't have much time. Keep those phones ringing. It doesn't have to be a big contribution like the card-carrying commie. We want small donations, too. Fellow travelers, pinkos, Democrats, Republicans. Every little bit helps, and we have to reach our goal within a... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on, Bruce? Conrad, this is the entire fifth grade class of PS54, and they've just brought in their teacher, Miss Minnie Newton. Oh, isn't that cute? These kids have come down to make the contributions in persons. What do you say, folks, with kids like these, we don't have to worry about our future. Let's hear it, Farah! Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Hello, John Lurch Telethon. Name that communist. Your neighbor, Fred Dobbs, wonderful. Your babysitter, Little Evelyn Truji, marvelous. And who? Your husband, Sylvester, and your four little kitties. Thank you, and God bless you, mother. <laughs> Folks, we've only got a minute left. We still need just a few more to get us over the top. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, here come those kids from PS54 back again, and folks, I think we've really got it made. Yes, sir, we're really going over the top. They brought us the really big one. Ho, ho, ho! Put me down! Put me down! <laughs> In his funeral oration for Julius Caesar, Mark Antony said, the evil that men do lives after them, the good is often interred with their bones. Now I'm no authority on good or evil, but as a wise man recently said, there's a buck to be made in bones. <laughs> Yes, I'd like to see an undertaker. Sir, please. You mean you want to see a grief therapist? <laughs> okay, if he's the one in charge of burying... Sir, at Slumberhaven, we do not bury, we lay to rest. All right, whatever you do with the body... There are no bodies here, only loved ones. <laughs> really, sir, what are you trying to do, depress me? Well, I, I'm sorry, I really didn't Never mind. mean... I suggest you consult with our Mr. Farley. You'll find him on the mezzanine of Serenity Hall. How do I get there? You just go out the door past the gate of remembrance, turn left at the wishing well, take the Japanese footbridge across the duck pond, <laughs> then straight down the mall past the miniature golf course, <laughs> turn right at the souvenir shop, and there you are, Serenity Hall. You can't miss it. It's the big orange building with the black stripes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, just a moment, sir. There are others ahead of you. You'd better take a number from the little machine. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Good afternoon again. This is the voice of Slumberhaven. For the next 15 minutes only, our main showroom is offering a 20% discount <laughs> on all executive caskets. This includes the Ivy Leaguer, the Sportsman, and the commuter special. Excuse me, is this Serenity Hall? Just a moment, please. <laughs> number 72, 72. All right, number 73. That's me, here's my ticket. Yes, sir. Step into my consultation room, please. I am Mr. Farley, your grief therapist. How do you do? I'm Vaughn Meter. Uh, Mr. Meter, allow me to extend my heartfelt condolences to you on behalf of everyone here at Slumberhaven in this, your hour of bereavement. Sit down, please. You may cry if you wish. <laughs> Kleenex? Uh, no thanks. Now, sir, a few necessary facts. First, what is the name of the beloved who has passed on to his reward? Zippy. <laughs> uh, Zippy. 
Yes, my turtle Zippy, he's dead. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Meter, not dead. He's only sleeping. Sleeping? I'd like to see you wake him up. Look, he's... <laughs> he's right here, right here in this cigar don't, don't, box. Don't open Look the at... box, please. Don't... Don't open the box! Who's the box? What are you trying to do? Depress me? <laughs> No, please, place yourself in my hands and tell me what sort of arrangements that you have in mind for the beloved. Well, I thought maybe you could lend me a shovel, see, and I could... I could dig a little hole in the back someplace and drop the beloved in. <laughs> Mr. Meter. Mr. Meter, is this the way you intend to repay Zippy for the many hours of comfort and companionship he's given you? Well, you know, to tell you the truth, we were never too close. <laughs> so if you could just lend me a shovel, I'll go outside. Uh, Mr. Meter, please, just look at this brochure. Pictures of Slumberhaven's very own pet paradise. Pet paradise? Yes, look here. Why not let Zippy rest on this lovely green hill? It's right between horsey heaven and pussycat paradise. <laughs> okay, just give me a little spoon, and I'll go out and <laughs> dig a hole. Just, just, just one moment, please. A turtle plot four by six will cost you... $2,000. What? Well, on the sunny side of the hill. Of course, if you want to be heartless and lay him to rest on the shady side, that's a mere seventeen fifty. Look, how about giving me a sharp stick and a paper bag? <laughs> yes, but Mr. Meter, you'll be happy to learn that the price includes the following extras. One, cosmetology. Our Mr. Percy, he was with Max Factory, you know, will make Zippy look just the way he did in real life. You mean green and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. A genuine plastic headstone that glows in the dark. Number three, a dignified service. In this case, non-denominational. There'll be a slight additional charge for a eulogy, of course. By Georgie Jessel, I suppose. Oh, no, no. He won't touch anything smaller than a chicken. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look, buddy. Here's a couple bucks. You just lend me a shovel. Forget you ever saw me, all right? Shame. Shame on you, Mr. Meter. Shame. How can you be so cruel? Open that box. Take a look at the beloved. Take a look at this gentle, loving creature. Take a look hey, at... Hey, Zip, Zippy's moving. He's alive. Take that dirty, rotten turtle and get out of here. Number 74, please. This is the era of big business, big deals, and just plain big, big, big. The medical profession, however, is one of the few callings that has resisted this trend. As the late, great Sigmund Freud once said, a doctor is a doctor is a doctor is a doctor is a doctor. Isn't this exciting, Dr. Schreiber? You bet, Dr. Tully. See who's here? Look around. There's Hoffmeyer, chief surgeon at Sedgwick General. Mm. Baxter, top cardiologist at Memorial. The top men in their field. Uh, how's business, Dr. Schreiber? Fantastic. There's a marvelous new virus running around my neighborhood. <laughs> business is so good, I've given up night calls. Oh, that's great. Uh, what's a night call? <laughs> Dr. Foster, I didn't expect to see you here. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Dr. Tully, I'd like you to meet Dr. Foster of the Surgical Academy. He pulled me through anatomy at med school. Glad to meet you, Tully. You youngsters keep your eyes and ears open today and you'll really learn something. That's why I canceled my calls. Private patients are one thing, but a chance to study under meter. Yes, we know, doctor. That's why we're here. Dr. Foster, you know how much I value your opinion. Tell me, what do you think of Medicare? Son, you show me a man that needs Medicare and I'll show you a sick old man. <laughs> Just remember, our medical association knows what's best for the people and was very wise to recognize the needs by establishing these clinics. Oh, here comes Meter now. Gentlemen, today I will discuss the most delicate and demanding procedure you will ever encounter. Putting on a fast green. Before you stroke the ball, check the grass for moisture. Make sure...
Traditionally, it has always been a woman whose clothing is stylish and colorful. Today, I am happy to say men have become style conscious too and just as eager to assert themselves fashionably. Two pillowcases, one bedspread, two mattress covers. That'll be $12.32 plus 10 cents tax. Thank you, Mrs. Ashley. And thank you, Mr. Meter. You'll be good now, yeah? Yes, gentlemen, may I help you? Yeah, boy, we want to see some sheets. <laughs> yes, sir, twin, double, what size? 38 long. <laughs> I beg your pardon. My boy, Billy Jack here. I'm going to buy him his first sheet. My daddy's the grand dragon. He's the best grand dragon that ever was. And I'm going to be just like my daddy. By day, I'm going to work at the city dump. But at night, I'm going to get me a shotgun and go out riding and burn me some crosses and all like that. The good Lord willing. Amen, Billy Jack. Amen. Uh-huh. All righty. Now, here are some very fine muslin no, sheets. No, no, no. <laughs> Not muslin again. It just won't drape. It won't? You listen to him, boy. He's the head of our costume department. And besides, he's our imperial wizard. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Wizard. Just call me Imperial. <laughs> okay, Imperial, now what kind of sheet did you have in mind? Well, I was thinking of something different. Something more elegant. Something that old. Clang. Well, I have some percale sheets. No, no, no. I already have three of them. They're just hanging in my closet. Besides, percale is too old for little old Billy Jack. Don't you have anything more youthful? Well, I have some rubber sheets at the Didy counter. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly. Well, hurry it up, boy. We're riding tonight, and I ain't bought the lumber and kerosene yet. And marshmallows, Daddy. <laughs> Don't forget the marshmallows. You promised me if I help you clean out Miss Perkins' cesspool, you're going to buy me those big toasting marshmallows with the jelly beans and all the little oh, Wait, things. wait a minute, wait a minute. Imperial, I think I have it just for the thing. Chiffon. Silk chiffon. It's light as a feather. It moves like a dream. Look here. Ooh, <laughs> chiffon. But dare we? I mean, don't you think it's a bit much? Oh, oh no, sir. This season, it's all the rage in Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham. Well, that's good enough for me. But uh, the color, it just don't look pure white. Oh, that's just the lighting in here, sir. It's true white. But don't take my word for it. Step outside and take a look at it yourself in the moonlight. <laughs> never mind, never mind. We don't have the time. Now just wrap it up. No, don't wrap it up, Daddy. I want to wear it right now. <laughs> you bet, Billy Jack. Step over to the mirror. Now let me drape this chiffon over your little head. There. Now that's you. Ooh, stunning. Now, all we have to do is take up the hemline about two inches, and instead of a pink and hem, I think I'll, I'll just use a half feather stitch hem. Now, I'll just take a little tuck under the arms and right through the back to give the sleeves a ragline effect. <laughs> and just one final touch, a white satin belt basted right onto the skirt. It's heaven. My little boy. He's all grown up now. <laughs> you don't need his daddy no more. Yes, sir. I just lost my little son. Well, from where I look at it, Mr. Dragon, you haven't lost a son. You've just gained a daughter. <laughs> There we go, some radio or possibly TV comedy there from the 1963 recording. Probably this record came out the same year as my guess, but eh, it's a bit, a bit scratched up. I'm surprised it survived. But anyway, here we go. Von Metter 
have some nuts. All right, now on to the kids' record of the night. Uh, we have Puff the Magic Dragon, done by Peter Pan Singers in Orchestra. There's no mention of Walt Disney on here anywhere. So, and there's no year on it either. So I figure sometime in the 1960s. Not too sure, but we'll put it on here. This uh, survived pretty good for being a kid's record. There's a few scratches I can see on there, but and maybe some damage. We'll give it a play. I have not, have not, I have not, I have not, I have not played this one through yet. So anyway, Peter Pan, <clears throat> Peter Pan Records, not Disneyland, not Disney Records at all. N nice yellow, bright yellow uh, label. Similar to what uh, Disney uses for their uh, labels as well in the records. Let's uh, start her up and give it a little dusting here with what I can dust off here. But anyway, Puff the Magic Dragon record. Mm, let's see, is this, is this based on any movie? Let's see. Um. No mention of it being from a movie. I have the Disney uh, Puff the Magic Dragon record, uh, which was from a movie, but that got blocked on YouTube by Disney. Sadly, this this record might also get blocked on YouTube, so you might only hear me talking about the record before I actually play it here. If the uh, entire section is missing on YouTube, well, then you know why. Okay, so Puff the Magic Dragon. On the back is the game. Yeah. The game. I'll show you the uh, uh, up, up, clo up close as, mu as much as I can. So, 1960 sometime. I can't see any copyright date. So, if this gets uh, blocked on YouTube, well, oh well. This will be the only time you'll hear this record then. All right. So, this is not Disney. There's no word of Disney on anywhere on here. So, which came first, this record? Or Disney although it, with Peter Pan singers in orchestra who who had to pa Peter Pan at the time hmm interesting so it might be a Disney record under a different label Peter Pan records all right let's give it a listen and figure it out and there we go Ooh, that took a while to dig in What's in the elephant's trunk? What's in the elephant's trunk? Elephant ties for elephant boys. Elephant curls for elephant girls. Various kinds of, of elephant junk. junk. That's what's in the elephant's trunk. What's in the elephant's trunk? What's in the elephant's trunk? Elephant jokes for elephant folks. Elephant pails for elephant tails. Various kinds of elephant junk. That's what's in the elephant's trunk. What's in the elephant's trunk? What's in the elephant's trunk? Elephant bats for elephant cats. Elephant knives for elephant wives. Various kinds of elephant junk. That's what's in the elephant's trunk. What's in the elephant's trunk? What's in the elephant's trunk? Cheers for elephant ears. Elephant pills for elephant ills. Various kinds of elephant junk. That's what's in the elephant's trunk. What's in the elephant's trunk? 
What's in the elephant's trunk? Elephant stays for elephant's eyes. Elephant bows for elephant's clothes. Various kinds of, of elephant, elephant junk. That's what's in the elephant's trunk. What's in the elephant's trunk? He didn't care about the golden rule. That's why he was such a fool. Lenny the Leopard. Lenny the Leopard was a glum one. Lenny the Leopard was a dumb one. How could he ever live a life of these When he couldn't say thank you and he wouldn't say please He never learned his ABCs Lenny the Leopard Lenny the Leopard was a smarty He thought that life was one big party as years go by, he's gonna learn his fate And wanna go to school so he can graduate But he'll find out that it's too late For Lenny the Leopard Don't be like Lenny the Leopard Don't be like Lenny the Leopard when he grew up, he had money to spend. With all his money, couldn't find a friend. And that was the very end of Lenny. Lenny, poor Lenny, poor Lenny, poor Lenny, the leopard. The lion with the mangy mane Was lost as a babe in a shady lane He lost his father, lost his mother Lost his sister, lost his brother He was afraid to leave the shady lane He found a little cave in a shady lane Never felt the sunshine, never felt the rain. His coat was dull, it had no glow. But his beautiful body continued to grow. He was afraid to leave the shady lane. The lion with the mangy mane was lost as a babe in a shady lane. His mother found his sister and his brother found his mate and left the shady lane. The lion with the mangy mane. The lion. Jerry the big giraffe His neck is long His legs are strong When he feels that danger's near He can run just like a deer When Jerry's throat is sore They feed him cough drops by the score More and more and more
the big giraffe with head so high above the breeze moves around with so much ease eating leaves from tops of trees he stands so straight and that is why his head can almost reach the sky give three cheers in For him to hide Mean old hunter passing by Mama zebra caught his eye Just stood still where the grass was high Zebra stripes If you want to have some fun Count zebra stripes Try to follow them one by one On his ears and on his nose On his tail and on his toes Up and down and round it goes Zebra stripes To tell that he is not a mule Though a donkey's about his size He don't have donkey ears or eyes The thing that makes him such a prize Zebra stripes Jungle is his playground, built especially for him. He's at home where he can roam from tree to tree and limb to limb. Trouble to him is a stranger. He has a moral to teach. He manages to keep out of danger by keeping out of reach. Definitely different for Walt Disney to uh, put out on record that you ne probably never heard before. But yeah, I looked it up. Uh, Peter Pan Records is actually Walt Disney uh, produce uh, produce records company. 
Okay, it's very interesting to uh, give that a listen. Uh, yeah, Blast from the Past. They kept the same color scheme for their labels, though, when they switched over to Disneyland Records instead. Okay, and now on to the DJ Record of the Night from 2002. Two, 2002, yeah. So, here we go with the... Uh, Let's see, let's do side A. Sherry the anyway, and this is gonna be the Max uh Hooter Club mix and the original rhythm edge extended mix. Alright. Do the uh, side. Yeah, there we go. Do side A first for ya. Alright, DJ Records, uh, this probably made it into the club scene in 20, 2002 when this came out 19 years ago. Has it been long, that long? And has this music survived uh, 19 years and still a great uh, club hit? Uh, great club mix. Well, let's give it a listen here, just be the dusting here. There we go. All right, let's dive into what a DJ would have, might have played in 2002 in some club somewhere. There's various uh, for this four tracks on this record, so that's four different feels that the DJ can pick from. And let's give it a little dusting here too, just in case the uh, just, just in case the other record made my need made my stylus dusty. All right, let's dive in.
There's nothing you need to have it hand. So don't be afraid to show feeling you can't control. Uh, there we have it. That's my DJ record of the night here then. High Bias Records re released that in 2002. Probably still good enough for the club scene even today. Or dance, uh, you could play that for a dance as well. Would they call that a retro music from 2002? Or not? Anyway. Alright, back to the uh, unknown band I've never heard of uh, before, and this is side two of Hell of a Band, that's the name of it, released on Casablanca Records that was uh, manufactured by Quality Records. Alright, side two of this one, unknown. <laughs> okay, so uh, this time I'll show you the uh, cover for this one. Anyway, but uh, yeah, it's an unknown band. 1976 is the year this uh, re album came out here. Uh, yeah, so let's get in. Uh, stylus of cleaning. Yes, the preamp is still live, even though the uh, turntable shut down, but I don't know why Audio Technica did that uh, for their turntable. Now, this is their low end turntable, but anyway. Anyway, let's get uh, going here to. Hell of a band. That's the name of the group. Yep, definitely is. Let's give it a dusting here. And dig on in. Uh, there we have it. Hell of a band. That's the name of the band. Hell of a. Uh, I, I would call this a lost 70s album. It fell through the cracks. Awesome music. It fits the 1976 uh, genre very nicely for rock music back in the time. Maybe they were a little too progressive on the guitars. Kind of heavy, heavy metal-ish before heavy metal actually really came out. I think... This is a hidden gem, not a trashy record. Hell of a, yeah. And also on the front cover, they are all chained together with, uh, uh, from hand to hand, and they're all chain ganged. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so, hmm. Definitely very well done, very well produced, and nice condition. Just one skip in it. Oh well. Oh well. Oh, that's a very nice. Okay. All right, back to 1973. Von Mitter, side two of Have Some Nuts. Comedy. Let's put this on here the way it should be. There we go. That's upright on a uh, turn on a table now. Von Mitter. Yeah, this is recorded. Uh, yeah, 1963, 
likely released the same year but anyway yeah okay so back to this uh, crazy record of comedy side two I'm uh, just gonna get it uh, dusted here there's that preamp still powered on even though Audio Technica should have uh, turned that off when the record is uh, players off otherwise it just wastes a waste a tiny bit of electricity but uh, this record player is from 2008 so we weren't really too energy, energy conscious back then but we were still uh, starting to get energy conscious in 2008 this is my new needle I, I did put on it a couple weeks ago and the old needle I'm keeping that to do another project I'll probably do that on Friday yeah uh, I use the old needle for my other project on Friday and I'm also working on the KTEL versus the original artist I might do another special stream through the week Tuesday uh, if I feel like it I'll do a stream Tuesday as well for uh, my vinyl show then all right let's dive into Von Metter have some nuts don't eat my nuts though well maybe you can ladies and gentlemen last night I had the wildest dream I dreamt I was a dog not a pedigree dog or anything like that, just a common, ordinary mutt walking along the street, sniffing car fenders, when all of a sudden I came... You see, I found myself in the middle of a big bunch of dogs, so I turned to him and said, Rap! What's going on here? You ain't find out, Cherie. All right, all right, everyone, quiet, please. This meeting will now come to order. Who is that English bulldog? That is Sir Basil. He's presiding over tonight's meeting. <laughs> Tonight, fellow canines, we are confronted with a matter of the utmost gravity. One of our number has committed a dastardly act which threatens to destroy the good name in the world of men. <laughs> Will the prisoner please step forward? What is this all about? What prisoner? That one's there. No. That German police dog standing between the two boxers. No, you heard what the judge said, Fritz. Get out there. Prisoner, step forward and state your name. My name is Fritz Wolfgang schleswig holstein License number 630-7. And would you tell the court the name of your master? My name is Fritz Wolfgang schleswig holstein The name of your master. On this article of the Geneva Convention, I am only required to tell you my name and license number. Uh, you are directed I to give me the name. I will tell you his master's name. I am not afraid. <laughs> his master's name is Sergeant Otis Spurlock of the Alabama State Police. <laughs> order, 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 order. You are behaving like a pack of people. <laughs> Prisoner. How do you plead? I refuse to plead. I will not submit to a kangaroo court conducted by a bunch of dogs. I demand to lawyer. No. He's right, he's right. He's entitled to counsel. I'll defend him. Oh, Sherry, he doesn't deserve it. He would never give you such a chance. Believe me, I know the bush. Stand aside. Stand aside, sir. I'm ready to defend you because I believe in the American way. According to the Constitution, everyone shall have a right to a fair and impartial... Oh, shut up! <laughs> what? Shut up, you mongrel hound. <laughs> Your Honor, I demand another lawyer. This dog has mixed blood and I am of pure stuff. My pedigree paper shows that my great-great-grandfather was Rudolf of Stuttgart and my mother was a blue-ribbon Bavarian blue blood. Duh! What did he say? Uh, mind your, I, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, I was a blue. Uh, keep your, my, your pushy box up. What are you having? Your, I was. Oh, silence, silence. Silence. <laughs> silence. Now, now listen here, von Rittendorf. Who have no alternative. I hereby appoint as your counsel this. Uh, what is your name? Prince. Prince. <laughs> 
some prints. The only papers he got are the ones he was housebroken on. Enough, enough. Defense counsel, proceed. Very well, Your Honor. Now, sir, you are charged with attacking people. Are you guilty? Oh, good gracious, no. I have always been a peaceful dog. There is nothing I used to like better than to sit in front of the fire and have my master file my fangs. And then they drafted me. Are you trying to say, sir, that you were forced to attack people against your will? But of course, you nice mongrel, you. I was only following orders. All of us were. The officers made us do it. They are the guilty ones. What's the matter? Didn't you see judgment at Nuremberg? Then how do you answer to the charge of biting children? Was those children? Nobody told me. <laughs> We've heard enough. Turn them over to the dog catcher. Uh, we had a good day going until you came along. Judge, just give me one minute alone with him at the alley. Couchant, you are not a dog. You are a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Comrades, please. When it comes to this kind of thing, listen to a Russian wolfhound. Your honor. May I speak? Very well, Boris. Please be brief. We have a very simple method for dealing. Do we do that? I'm glad I asked. When we don't like something, we decide does not exist. I beg your pardon. We make believe never happen. You mean like Joseph Stalin? Who? <laughs> I see what you mean, but what bearing has that on this case? It's very simple. Since prisoner has disgraced all dogs, prisoner is no longer a dog. No longer a dog? What on earth do you mean? From now on, he's a cat. <laughs> hey, you, Fritz, you're a cat. Oh, this is ridiculous. Shut I up, pussycat. <laughs> go, 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 go. Go chase a mouse before we bite you in pieces. You, you, you can't do this to me. Meow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They've got us outnumbered. They will look out. There's one behind you. Oh! Oh. Oh. He missed me. Wow, that was a close call, sir. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on the rat who's been selling them whiskey. Oh, here they come again. Heaven help us. Listen. Listen, look. They're coming. They're coming. Oh, no. First the Shriners, now the American Legion. <laughs> This is the last straw. Miss Jones, take a letter. Editor of the New York Times. Dear sir, I've sat idly by and read your political rantings long enough. Your editorial this morning cannot go unchallenged. Integration will never work. If God had intended the races to live together in equality, there would be no black and white. The fact of the matter is we don't want to live next door to them. We don't want them in our schools. We don't want to be their brothers. Integrate, and the next thing you know, they'll be marrying your sisters. Type that up and send it right away. Yes, sir. Shall I sign it the usual way? No. You write the Malcolm, and I'll make the X. <laughs> Our best-selling books, our highest-grossing movies and plays, and our most profitable business enterprises owe their success to a new phenomenon, the all-American fetish. <laughs> well, well, I will say this, Mr. Magwitch, you just threw us a bit of a curve. You must admit that as far as advertising is concerned, your product has many built-in problems. But we here at Partridge, McKechnie, and Meter welcome a challenge. 
Right, gentlemen? Thanks. Right. Well, I'm, right. I'm delighted to hear you say that, Mr. McKechnie, but unless my sales pick up immediately, I'll have to go out of business. Well, we won't let that happen, Mr. Magwitch. The world needs iodine. I... I agree, sir. Magwitch and son have been producing the finest iodine since 1832. Here, have a bottle. All right, men. There you have it. Product, iodine. Problem, sell. Rick, it's your ball. Okay, Chief. Product not selling, reason, consumer resistance. Why? Poison. And let's face it, poison isn't a fun thing. We had to put a little fun into iodine. I got it. I got the slogan. Double your poison, double your fun. Uh, uh no, no, Arnold. Uh, why don't you just check the mail or something, huh? Now, Rick, about your fun angle. Forget the fun and let's get to it. There's only one thing that's going to sell iodine. Sex! Aha! Now we're off and running! Mr. Magwitch, this is my partner, Buzz Meter, Director of Motivational Research. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Meter. Magwitch, sex, sex! What sells cigarettes? Sex! What sells soap? Sex! What sells deodorants? Statues? <laughs> Sexy statues, Mr. Magowitch. Sex sells everything. But iodine? When our Mr. Meter says sex sells everything, Mr. Magowitch, you can believe him. Last year, he tripled the sales of Wilson's fertilizer. Well, how did he ever do that? Simple. A two-page spread in life. Beautiful girl in a bikini fertilizing her lawn. And she says... Now all the boys want to sit on my grass. <laughs> all right, Mr. Mita, all right. Whatever you say. But where do we start? We start with that bottle. Look at it, drab, shapeless, tacky. Gentlemen, what does this bottle say to you? I get no message, Buzz. Me either. It says nothing to me. I got it. I know. It says, in case of swallowing, induce nausea. Uh, Arnold, uh, why don't you go sharpen some pencils? <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, the bottle has no sexability. We've got to take iodine out of the bathroom and put it in the bedroom. <laughs> Bart, you're a bottle man. Take the ball. Right, Buzz. What do you say to a crystal decanter with a gold atomizer on top? Touchdown! But, but <laughs> iodine with an atomizer? I never heard of it. I got it. I got the slogan. Mommy, mommy, spritz my boo-boo. <laughs> um, Arnold. Arnold, why don't you uh, empty the ashtrays, huh? <laughs> All right, Buzz, what next? The iodine itself. Now look at that dirty brown color. It looks like, like medicine. But it is medicine. Well, who says a good medicine has to be dull? <laughs> right, Rick, right, right. We changed the color to pink. Passion pink. You're going to put artificial coloring in my iodine? Exactly. And we call it the miracle ingredient, sexachlorophyll. <laughs> Touchdown and point after! <laughs> uh, hold, hold it, Chief. What about the skull and crossbones on the label? Buzz, uh, how do you make a skull sexy? You can't. It's got to go. But, Mr. Mead of the Federal Drug Administration says that the skull and crossbones must be prominently displayed on the label. Uh-oh. Fumble, fumble. <laughs> never mind, never mind. I got it. We tattoo the skull and crossbones on her thigh. On whose thigh? The girl on the label. Well, who's she? I don't know. We pick her during National Iodine Week. <laughs> How do you like that, Mr. Duvalier? Uh, no, Mr. Meter. The name is Magwitch. M A G W. -I -G. Not anymore. It's Duvalier. Iodine from the house of Duvalier. Beautiful, Meter. Beautiful. That'll sell your iodine, Mr. Duvalier. All right, gentlemen. We're in the final quarter. What we need now is a great slogan for our television campaign. The ball is loose. Go after it. Beautiful girl in negligee, reclining in her boudoir. Slogan, this is iodine country. <laughs> not, uh, not quite, Rick. Beautiful teenager in a negligee, but stacked. She scratches her finger. Slogan, more Duvalier iodine, Mom! 
Uh, sounds a little too familiar. Wait! I got it! I got it! Beautiful girl in a negligee changing the tire. Slogan, I dreamt I fixed a flat. Uh, I know. <laughs> Arnold, why don't you empty the waste baskets? Gentlemen, gentlemen, one moment, please. I'm afraid I haven't been completely honest with you. Have any of you ever used iodine? Well, of course not, that's ridiculous. Well, then, I, I must be frank. When you apply iodine to a cut, it, it hurts. I mean, it really stings. That's our slogan. Huh? Send in Miss Hunter. Mr. Duvalier, Bonnie Hunter is the greatest sex symbol that we've ever used on television. She'll really... Now, Bonnie, dear, come over here. I want you to read this line when I give you the cue. All right, gentlemen, get the picture. Beautiful Bonnie in a negligee getting ready for bed. Oh. She scratches her little knee. Ah. She reaches for the crystal decanter. Oh. Lifts her negligee. Ah. Sprays a lovely pink mist of iodine on the affected area <laughs> and says, Oh, it stings. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, let's uh, settle down. Cell number 17, Lenin chapter of the Communist Party of America will come to order. Comrade Secretary, call the roll. Comrade Simmons. Here. Comrade Taylor. Here. Comrade Kransky. Here. Comrade Varelli. Here. Comrade Ryan. Here. Comrade McDowell. Here. Comrade Stevens. <laughs> Comrade Stevens. He's not here. Again? All right, meeting adjourned. All right. Hey, fellas, you deal the cards. I make a phone call. Hello, Washington. Put me through to the chief. Hello, J. Edgar. Meter speaking. We had to cancel the cell meeting. Well, what could I do? Our communists didn't show up again. <laughs> In our daily battles with life and death, it is vital that we first ask ourselves the important question, what is the state of the union? Hey, you the guy who called for the ambulance? Yes, thank goodness you got here so fast. My wife is going to have a baby any minute now. Now, don't worry about a thing. We're going to get her to the hospital in no time. Hey, Charlie, Joe, bring out the stretcher. Hey, Charlie, Joe. <laughs> what do you know? I left in such a hurry, I forgot Charlie and Joe. <laughs> i tell you what you do, Mac. You just wait right here. I'll run over to the hospital and pick them up. I'll be back in no time hey, at wait all. Wait a minute. There isn't time for that. She's due any minute. Here, I'll open the door. You help don't her in. Don't touch that door. But my wife, we got Union a... Rule 1273 3 <laughs> Only union stretcher bearers shall be permitted to open ambulance doors. Then you open the door. What are you trying to do? Start a jurisdictional dispute? But my wife's having a baby. Sorry, buddy. A rule is a rule. You know how Jimmy is about things like that. <laughs> then, then please, you look the other way. I'll open the door. Murderer! Murderer? Taking the food out of the mouths of innocent little children. What children? Joe and Charlie's children. Who's going to feed them if you take away their daddy's jobs, huh? They work hard for their lousy $10 an hour. It didn't come easy. You know, you just don't open a door just like that, you know. It took them years to learn their craft. What would happen if everybody started opening their own doors? What would happen to Joe and Charlie and 10,000 other guys just like them, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead, open the door. Scab, scab, scab. Wait a minute, I'm not a scab. I'm a union man myself. Look, here's my car. Now let's take a look at that, Mac. Uh, American Guild of Variety Artists. <laughs> Orgon Meter. Hey, 
Hey, you're the comedian? Yes, but look, my and wife. I got a great joke for you, see? There's this old lady from Jaiji, you see? And she takes a trip to Paris, France, see? And then all of a sudden, she talks Wait a minute, my wife? The baby? Hey, give me a hand, will you? Oh, I can't, pal, not right now. Oh, for Pete's sake, why not? I'm on my coffee break. <laughs> I've seen enough. Stop the film. But, but, Mr. Meter, it's not over yet, sir. It is as far as I'm concerned. Do you seriously expect my seal of approval on that, that obscene film? Obscene, Mr. Meter, don't you realize that Listen, this Listen, I've got eyes. Don't you think I know what I'm doing? But tell you what, you cut the bathtub scene, <laughs> the plane crash, the kissing in the forest, and I'll give you our K-11 rating. What's that? Objectionable in part. Suitable, <laughs> suitable for adults over 45, only if accompanied by their parents. <laughs> but sir, without those scenes, there's nothing left of the picture. Oh, I'm sorry. You leave those scenes in and I'll be forced to give you the X-28B. That's objectionable throughout and suitable only for registered nurses. <laughs> Now, if you'll please oh, excuse please, me. Oh, please, wait a minute, please. The least you can do is look at the rest of the picture. All right, all right, but it's not gonna change my mind. Run it, Joe! The bat power, folks. <laughs> Well then, that was a surprise ending at the very, very end there. Wow, okay, that was fun. Von Metter, Have Some Nuts, 1963. 1963 humor, although some of the humor would not be repeated today. Keep that in mind, this is 1963. Anyway, okay, so that was a very interesting album, Blast from the Past. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Oops. Camera. There we go. All right. Next up, we got. Um, funny how uh, North the, the funny how the North America artistic uh, render there is changes the position from time to time when it stops. Okay, back to the uh, kids' record. All right, I looked them up. Uh, Peter Pan uh, Records is actually Disney. So this is the, the Disney record in stereo. Uh, and this is Puff the Magic Dragon, side number two. All right. Okay, so let's go back in time. 1960 sometime. Not just, so 19, maybe around 1965 is my guess uh, when stereo records were starting to become more and more requested because of how well they sounded back then. Well, yeah, that's definitely going to be one of those. All right, let's give it a little dusting. Now, my first time I ran uh, Puff the Magic Dragon from the Disney movie, that entire record uh, got blocked on YouTube. Now, if, will this one be blocked on YouTube? Well, if, uh, if I suddenly go from me talking like this to when I hit the uh, play button and get it going here for you, I hit the wrong button. Oops, have to wait a second. Anyway, there we go. If, if, if it goes from this to the very end, it's been blocked. Pop the magic dragon. And 
In all of his paws, he lost his teeth in both of his jaws. No claws in his paws, no teeth in his jaws, and his color turned to green. That's what he got for being mean. The mean old grizzly bear. His chinny chin chin, his chest was bare and his belly caved in. No hair on his chin, his belly caved in. He was ashamed to be seen. In 
and all of his paws. He grew new teeth in both of his jaws, new claws in his paws, new teeth in his jaws, and his colors like it was before. Honeymoon, Hippie and his darling Lippy. They stopped in this city to see the circus, and they became dazzled by the city's glow. They bought a house in the city, and what do you know? The family began to grow and grow and grow. Hippie and Lippy, the apartments. Spring is from. Think about the days when they were young. Take all the little hips that love has brung and sing all the love songs that once they sung. Hippie and Lippie, the part of the same. I'm Lippie. I'm Hippie. Falls asleep. 
and falls asleep and falls A nosy, cozy little feller with his stripes of brown and yeller. Little Tippy, the tiger, thought that he was quite a grown up, so he tipped off on his own up to the corner. Little Tippy soon discovered he was lost and started crying, Mama, Mama. Baby Tiger, do give this bang. Tiger, too cute for a tank. Little Tippy, the tiger. Mama found that he was missing. She was in no mood for kissing. Little, Little Tippy, the tiger. After she had done her tiger thanking, Tippy got a tiger spanking. A nosy, cozy little feller with the stripes of brown and yeller. Baby tiger, do you to spank? Baby tiger, do you for tank? Little Tippy learned a lesson. Now you can start to bet, and that not soon will he begin forgetting. Tippy the tiger. She had done her tiger thanking Tippy got a tiger spanking Tippy the tiger Yeah, this is uh, before Disney uh, renamed their records to Disneyland Records. I think they actually had uh, two different uh, record companies before 1968. And they just became Disneyland Records there. All right, let's look it up here for you. Okay, so Peter and Records, because this is uh, basically uh, up to Magic Dragon, Peter Pan singers and orchestra is Disney. Let's look them up. There they are. Uh, let's see, it was introduced to public in March 1948. Is ah okay, interesting. Um, I wonder. There it is. Okay, Peter Pan Records. There we are. Okay, so it's Disney mentioned here. Yeah, I have the Peter and the Wolf record as well. Uh, yeah, interesting. I thought, I'm pretty sure it was Dis Disney here. Parent work company was SPC. Hmm, all right. They also did Santa Claus is Coming to Town. The thing is, uh, Walt Disney did uh, Puff the Magic Dragon movie. And let's see. Yeah, interesting. There's so much of Disney involved involvement here. Let's say you have SPC, Synthetic Plastics Company. Huh. Okay, uh, yeah, it, it, it's Disney's material done on Peter Pan Records. 
Hmm. Anyhow, it's uh, you can research that out as well if you're on your own there. It seems like people are, are think, thinking it is Disney. <clears throat> Anyhow, last record of the evening is the side two of my DJ record. All side double A. Anyway, okay, and I'm now be calling it a night. Um, if I feel up to it, I might do a, a small stream tomorrow night. Uh, doing video at work. I mean, and this is uh, Sherry Lee. Uh, what was it? Uh, and, uh, Sherry Lee. Anyway, okay. This is uh, this side here. Polar Babies Anthem Club Mix. Okay, and I can hardly read it here. Um, and then also the up uh, and the uplifting club mix. Okay, so four different uh, tracks for the DJ to pick depending on the mood that he wants to portray uh, on the dance floor. From that 2002, this could have very well been uh, played uh, at a, a furry dance uh, uh, at a con somewhere in the world. But anyway, let's give it a little dusting here. All right, so I'll let you know. Uh, hopefully, you, you've got the notifications enabled so you can uh, know when I stream my recording of Ketel versus the artist tomorrow if I get up to it. All right.
much deeper than you can know.
Bye-bye.